how do you foresee the, the future of, uh, of scope in social networks? Are we going towards more um, close to... I think uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a fascinating question. Um, <laughs> that almost always means from an American I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, I give, me, give me a moment while I try to make something up. So um, it turns out that social networks, even ones that don't have scope, are scoped um, for two reasons. The first is there's a sort of branding scope. Um, my colleague uh, Dana Boyd is an uh, internet sociologist who sparked a lot of controversy about a year ago because she did some research that showed in the US, in the US we don't talk about economic class, it's a forbidden topic. So. Um, she did research that showed there was a class difference between the users of MySpace and the users of Facebook, the two biggest um, sites in, in the US for social networking. So that uh, Facebook was more of a college crowd and MySpace was more of the working class uh, crowd. Um, there are reasons why that happened. Uh, the clearest one maybe is that Facebook initially was scoped. Only you had to be a college student to use it, and then they opened it up. So there are reasons why, but it also gets, so that's the first uh, scoping that happens. And the second is the scoping that happens because of the functionality. The functionality of the system tells you what, so LinkedIn says, here's a way for Number one, to connect to number five, that tells you that this is a business opportunism <laughs> so, um, And likewise, Match.com has its, its own capability. So there's inevitably, in the buttons on the elevator, they tell you what the scope of it is. And the result is, I think, that inevitably, we're going to have multiple social networks. We always have had them on the internet. Uh, we've had people who use Usenet and who made fun of anybody who came to Usenet with an AOL.com address, a type of scoping, social scoping. We've had Usenet and then we've had safer Yahoo group mailing lists and we've had, you know, there always will, I hope, there will always be multiple, multiple, multiple social networking sites of various types for different reasons, different scopes, because we are very complex people and we need that sort of thing, which is also a reason why openness of a particular type is very valuable. It adds value to each of the networks. Openness doesn't necessarily mean it's open source and it's free. If that stuff's great, but there are times, there are things that only a business can do and that we are willing to pay for and should be willing to pay for. Uh, but even then, the, the networks gain value by being connected through, to other networks through data sharing standards, through uh, API standards, all of which now, are, these are the very issues that we are facing in our culture as these social networking sites become more, more important. And I know that Bongiorno is also facing and considering and responding to. So it will, I think, in other words, short answer, lots of social networks, and I hope increasingly the ability to, to let us move among them fluidly. Yeah, my, my addition to that is that actually uh, I, I had more time to think, so maybe, <laughs> uh, well, not necessarily the answer this month, but let's say sort of more for now. Actually, I think that uh, you, you pointed to the right sort of, uh, at the end of the day, LinkedIn is, uh, is uh, I think there are differences among those. On one end, between Match and all the others, in a way, I think that Match, to some extent, and the dating one are, let's say, Anonymous. So basically, you don't want to be there, let's say, in an evident way. Or if you want, you don't have, let's say, well, I don't want to have my wife uh, as my friend on match.com. So that means it's anonymous. So talking of, of this sort of, uh, say, non-anonymous social network, I think that, in a way, what Facebook uh, um, uh, shows is that actually, in my view, the more general you are, the bigger you are. In a way, LinkedIn is in fact probably deeper but smaller. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, sort of Facebook is sort of thinner but larger. I think that, let's say, sort of uh, extrapolating that, since uh, because of the constraints of mobile, actually, if you, you have something which is very personal but also tends to be quite thin, you know, because of the size, because of you are on the go or whatever. Actually, I think that. Um, the right way of approaching the social network on mobile, in my view, is to, have, to do something very simple. 
very generalistic and uh, very, say, where actually you, the user can do different things with that, but precisely because it offers just the key feature. So in fact, I don't envision, say, application, let's say Facebook, as we were discussing before, I don't envision Facebook application on a mobile phone. Actually, I think that on a mobile phone, you are gonna add the key <coughs> feature. So let's say, friends management, uh, communicating with friends, or sending messages, chatting, knowing who is online, who is not online, um, reading and doing status updates, or Twitter-like, and sharing, very simple user generated content like pictures or videos that you take. So actually my then I think these things at some point in time will converge. So actually when the screen when well, let's say something like the iPhone has like big market share, actually the distinction between the fixed and or let's say the web based and the mobile social network will somewhat uh, merge and that I think that there the name of the game is gonna be aggregation or integration or interoperability. I think that till there, till then, which is, means in my view for the next, let's say, two years or so, we're going to see different social networks, maybe not that much integrated because there are sort of economic issues or let's say organizational issues of that, where actually the mobile social network, in my view, are going to be sort of thin, simple, but large. <coughs>